Okay, uh, this is a question from the uh, 2021 Solid Mechanics and Materials exam. Um, it's about finding the, well, resultant forces and moments, as it says in the question. And it's really about understanding how, if you've got weights or loads acting on a mechanical system, how that mechanical system is going to respond. Um, and I think what we'll do is just work through it and um, look at how we solve problems like this. So if I opened my exam and uh, this was the question I saw, this is how I do things. I just start, um, and I always say this, by drawing out the problem. So we've got a horizontal beam. I'm just redrawing exactly what's in the question. Uh, I've got a a wheel here that's on roll, sorry, a, a support here that's on rollers. I've got a support here that's fixed. Uh, we're told this is the x direction, and I guess this point here is is zero in the x direction. So everything is measured from that left hand support. Um, there are a couple of angles and things measured left on here, so this angle here is 60 degrees, I can note. Um, and then there are some forces and loads, effectively, so some of these might be, you know, the weight of something that's sitting on this object, or, or they might be something more complicated than that. Um, but anyway, uh, there's a little bit, the first three arrows I drew, I guess, kind of represent a constant load and then there's also a bit of a variable load here and there's a force over here that looks like this um, so that's what we've got and this um, all of these things are given in the question so uh, this force here is f equals 1.2 kilonewtons per meter this force here is F equals 350x plus 885 newtons per meter. Sorry, I've done my meter a bit untidily there. I'm just going to note a couple of things. This is called point A and this is called point B. Again, all from the question. Uh, there's an angle marked on here that this is 50 degrees. This is F equals 800 newtons. So just to be clear, these two forces here, the one that's 1.2 kilonewtons per meter and the one that's got this equation, 350x plus 885 newtons per meter, um, they're distributed loads. So they act over a, a length of this beam. Uh, and this load here is a point load, and so it just acts on one point of the beam. That's why these ones are measured in newtons or kilonewtons per meter, because they're distributed over a certain length, and this one is just given an absolute value of 800 newtons. The last thing we need to mark on before we start solving this is some length. So this is uh, 0.5 meters, then 0.4 meters, then 0.6 meters, then 1 meter. And this length here is 1.6 meters. Or I guess we could write it directly on here. This is 1.6 meters long. Um, and what I might just do, just to get some of the geometry started, we'll often want to know when we've got lines at an angle, it's helpful to break things up into horizontal and vertical components. Um, if I just look at this triangle here, I've got 60 degrees and I've got a hypotenuse of 1.6 meters. So sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, that's the the vertical bit, which I'll call y over 1.6, and it's sine 60 degrees. All of that means that y equals 1.6 sine 60 degrees. And somewhere I've got a calculator. It's 
so I can work that out. And that comes to be 1.39 meters. That's here, 1.39 meters. And similarly, cos 60 degrees equals the horizontal component, which I'll call x, over 1.6, which means that x equals 1.6 cos 60. And that is, well, cos 60 is a half, so that's um, 0.8 meters. But again, feel free to use a calculator for that. Don't ever worry that you, you shouldn't be using a calculator, I think. Um, okay, so we've got our diagram sort of marked up in a way that, that we're happy with for now, and we've marked on a couple of extra uh, lengths on there. Um, just before we move on, I'll reiterate, these kinds of sign and cause trigonometry questions, um, before you come to do an exam like this, you want to be able to do these kinds of calculations in your, in your sleep, and you know, be really confident you're getting them right. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is look at these distributed loads. Um, the first one is one point two kilonewtons per meter, we're told, and it acts over zero point four meters. And what I'm going to do, sort of in this section of my answer, I'm going to call this. Um, tidy up loads, or maybe clarify loads. What I want to be doing is just turning all of these loads, which aren't that easy to work with, into something that I do find easy to work with, and that's usually a horizontal or vertical point load. So this 1.2 kilonewtons per meter acts over 0.4 meters. You can probably see if, if we had a full meter of this load, we'd have 1.2 kilonewtons. That's what 1.2 kilonewtons per meter means. But we don't have a full meter, so we've got uh, a total load of 1.2 kilonewtons per meter times 0.4 meters. And that equals... 0.48 kilonewtons, that's 480 newtons. And because this is a constant load, the, the line on the top is flat, um, we can replace a constant load that's distributed for, for problems like this at least, um, with a point load halfway along. And so this is the same as a 480 Newton load, and across that what was a, a 0.4 meter span, it's now 0.2 meters on either side of the, the point load. So that's what we're going to replace that load with. Next, um, the next one's a little bit trickier because it's not a constant value. Um, it is 350x plus 885 newtons per meter. And this runs, if we just go back to the picture, uh, it goes from here to here. That's this section of the distance that it's in. So it goes from x equals 0.9 meters here to x equals 1.5 meters here. So I can mark that back on my diagram down here. And that means I can work out the, the y values, I guess. When x equals 0.9, uh, the load 
equals 350 times 0 0.9 plus 885. And that's 1,200 newtons. And when x equals 1.5, the load equals 350 times 1.5 plus 885. And that equals 1410. Just, I'm just going to check that because it's not quite such a round number. But nevertheless, it's true. 1410 newtons. And so we can work out the average load, and that equals 1,200 plus 1,410 divided by 2, and that's going to be 1,305 newtons. So we're going to replace this with a point load of 1,305 newtons. And when you've got a distributed load like this with a linear distribution, um, you replace uh, with a point load two thirds of the way along. Um, so in this case, two-thirds of the way from 0 0.9 to 1.5, the total distance, total gap is 0 0.6. Two-thirds of 0 0.6 is 0 0.4. So we want to be at a point 0 0.9 plus 0 0.4. That's 1.3 um, meters along the beam. So uh, this one is... 1305 uh, newtons at a distance of 1.3 meters along. So this is within that span of 0 0.6 meters. It's 0 0.4 and 0 0.2. That's what it means to be uh, two thirds of the way across the, the span in this context. Although, I've just noticed something. These aren't absolute values, I don't think, because this 885 was in newtons per meter. So I think these values here should have been in newtons per meter which means the average is in newtons per meter, which means the total, move to a new sheet, um, just gonna slightly scribble this bit uh, here out. I don't quite like that so much anymore. And again, this is, you know, um, something that it's, it's worth doing is just continually checking. Am I getting this right? Am I happy with what I'm doing? Um, so anyway, what we had is uh, 1305 newtons per meter over 0 0.6 meters, and that turns out to be um, 1305 times 0 0.6 newtons in total, which is 783 newtons. So, in fact, the point load, when it comes, is, same as before, over that 0 0.6 meter span, we can replace the whole span with this. But now we're saying it's 783 newtons as a point load. Okay, uh, so we've got our two distributed loads dealt with. And now the last thing is to look at this uh, 800 Newton load. Um, the 800 Newton load points down and to the right. 
and so we're going to replace it with a force acting to the right and a force acting down. Um, so this is 800. We're told that this angle here is 50, um, so this angle here must be 40 degrees. And again, we'll call the horizontal bit X and the vertical bit Y. And we can say sine 40 equals, uh, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's Y over 800. So y equals 800 sine 40. That's 514 newtons to three significant figures. And similarly, cos 40 will be x over 800, which means x is going to be 800 cos 40. And that's 613 newtons. So we've managed to replace this force at an angle with a horizontal force and a vertical force, which is good. I should say, by the way, um, I could have done this another way using the 50 degrees. I could have had my uh, 800 here and then had a downwards force and a force to the right, and that would have been 50 degrees. And if you do the calculation on this triangle, you'll find you get exactly the same answers because your, your sine and cos will switch around and everything else will stay the same. So um, that's just an aside. I'll rub that out. No, I won't because that eraser doesn't work, so we'll just leave it where it is. Anyway, at this stage, I've done the things I wanted to do with the forces. So what I'm going to do now is redraw the whole problem, but in a way that... Um, is quite a lot simpler, I hope. So we still got uh, our support, then a long horizontal beam, then a fixed support, and then a beam at an angle. And this is A and this is B. And instead of all the things that we had going on before, we've now got um, a force acting downwards of 480 newtons, which is a point force. A force acting downwards of 783 newtons, and that's also a point force. Uh, a force acting downwards here of 514 newtons. And a force acting to the right here of 613 newtons. And you can see this suddenly feels um, more manageable, I think, than some of the, the problem we had before. We'll mark on some lengths. Um, there was a 0.5 here, and then this is in the middle of a span of 0.4. So it's 0.5 plus 0.2, which is 0.7. You might just want to convince yourself that's true. And then this one here is... A, at a total, if I do the maths, of 1.3. So this length here is 0.6. Those are both in meters. Uh, and then I guess this length is 1.2 meters, giving me a total span of 2.5 meters, which matches up with what I had before. So just check you're happy. Essentially, um, it's... This 0.2 and 0.2 has replaced this 0. Point, sorry, uh, this 0.4. This 0.4 and 0.2 has replaced this 0.6, and uh, that's where all these numbers have come from. And we also know actually that this length here, we calculated that right at the start. That's 0. 0.8 meters, and this length height perhaps here is 1.39 meters. Is there anything else that I need to mark on there? Well I guess the last thing I can mark on there is what we're being asked to solve which is for reaction forces and moments. Um, these 
This is a, a pin joint on rollers. If you try and twist it, it'll just twist freely because it's a pin joint. If you try and push it sideways, it'll roll sideways. The only force that you can get out of that kind of joint is an upwards force, which I'll call RA. This is a fixed pin joint, so it can provide an upwards force, which I'll call RB, and a force to the side, which I'll call for the moment RH for R horizontal. And that's the picture now that we're working with. And we've got three unknowns, RA, RB and RH. And uh, we'll be able to get three equations because we can use horizontal equilibrium, vertical equilibrium and moment equilibrium. So let's do exactly that, uh, and then we'll be finished. Horizontal equilibrium is perhaps the easiest to start with. We say forces acting to the left equal forces acting to the right. I've only got one force acting to the left, and that's RH, and I've got one force acting to the right, and that's 613 newtons. So RH equals 613 newtons. Uh, let's do vertical equilibrium which says forces acting downwards, and I've got three of those, I've got 480 plus 783 plus 514, equal forces acting upwards, RA plus RB. And then finally, I can't solve this because I've got two unknowns at the moment, but I can do a moment equation, um, or moment equilibrium. And I guess the easiest thing to do is take moments about B. Um, generally, well, if a force passes through a pivot, then... Um, that force doesn't create any moment about the pivot. So if I choose B as my pivot, I can get rid of both of these unknowns. And the only unknown I'll have is RB. So I'm going to take moments clockwise about B. And that gives me RA multiplied by 2.5. I'm going to write these in and then show you where they come from. Minus 480 multiplied by 1.8, minus 783 multiplied by 1.2, plus 613 multiplied by 1.39, plus 514 multiplied by 0.8 equals zero. So roughly speaking, I've, I've had to uh, to do a moment calculation, I've had to account for, we said we don't have to account for these two forces because they go through the pivot at B. I've had to account for one, two, three, four, five forces. And in each case, I've had to multiply the size of the force by the perpendicular distance back to B. So this is the size of RA times its perpendicular distance back to B. 480 times the perpendicular distance from that force back to B, 783 times another perpendicular distance, 613 times another per perpendicular distance, and 514 times another perpendicular distance. I've also just had to get the signs right. Is this force tending to turn the thing clockwise or anti-clockwise about uh, B? And again, that's um, you know something just to check what I've done, make sure you're happy with it, um, and make sure that's the kind of thing you could reproduce in an exam. So uh, 2.5 RA equals, uh, now I can just put all of these bits into a calculator, 480 times 1.8 is 864 plus 939.6 minus 852.07 minus 411.2, which equals 
and I'm just putting all of this into my calculator. Uh, 540.33, which means RA equals that divided by 2.5, and that's approximately 216 newtons. Um, if I just go back to this line, I can uh, I can rewrite here RA plus RB equals whatever that sum is, 480 plus 783 plus 514, which is 1777 newtons. And then I can finish off here, 216, that's substituting in RA, plus RB equals 1777. So RB equals 1777 minus 216 is 1561 newtons. Sorry. So I guess I would just finish off by saying the reaction forces are um, 216 newtons upwards at A 1561 newtons upwards at B and um, 613 newtons to the left at B. And those are my answers. That's, that's what I believe the final answer to the question is. And I guess maybe just for tidiness, I'll underline that. show that that's my answer. Um, so yeah, there we are. That's um, how I would do that question. Uh, I don't have access to a, a full set of answers. So, you know, I, um, I may have made mistakes, but I think the, the general process there is, uh, is right. And I'd recommend trying to work through it on your own, trying to get to um, the same kind of place in the end. I guess the skills that we've needed are drawing out the question, replacing a constant distributed load with a point load, replacing a variable distributed load with a point load, replacing a force at an angle with horizontal and vertical forces, so we got to this picture here, and then resolving forces horizontally, resolving forces vertically, taking moments uh, and eventually getting to a final answer. I'll leave it there.